Hey everyone, it's your favorite host, Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And today we are going to be diving deep into podcast production, right? I have seen a lot of podcasters out there and they're just not doing it well. And I needed to find, when I found this gentleman, he stuck out to me like a sore thumb and I said, I got to get him on the show. You won't want to miss one second. I have a true podcast professional on the show today. And we're going to dive deep on what you should know, what we should know when podcasting and how to provide quality production, quality podcasting in this media world. Here we go. <laughs> It's your favorite gentleman, Marcus Norman, the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And I have a true professional whose background is in audio engineering, but business-wise all around. He has a business mind, and you'll see as we go through this deep dive of how he thinks and how he came to be and why he does what he does and what he's learned over the years. And hopefully he'll share some insider tips. He's constantly learning in order to keep on top of trends to best serve the podcasting community and his clients who he serves as well. He loves making new connections and having the opportunity to share knowledge and wisdom. And you'll see here that he's a absolute wealth of knowledge. So I can't hold this man back without further ado. This gentleman, Mr. Joel, coming to the Gentleman Style Podcast stage. Help me. Welcome to the stage, Mr. Joel. Thank you, Marcus. That was quite the intro. I think probably the most notable of any podcast that I've been on. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. It is all you, brother. You are incredible. And I couldn't have think thought of any way better than to bring you out in true fashion, man. I, it's rare to have, you know, another podcast professional on the show. And so I got to do it right. Got to do it right. <laughs> I think you did. You get two thumbs up. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So I want to beg the question. I want to start with an icebreaker here. What what triggered this? Because you have an incredible mind. And in this media-driven world, media is everywhere. You, you could do anything, right? You could do anything. You could literally do everything. You have the mind to do it. Why? What got you into podcasting production as a sound engineer? Because you could, I mean, you could be working with celebrities um, because that's in high demand. Everybody talk about DJ Cali. DJ Cali, let me just say that DJ Cali cannot sing. He's a sound engineer. That's his specialty. Um, Mm. Why did you join podcasting in the media world? Yeah, that's a great question, because originally I was doing some freelance work as a voiceover talent, and I like that whole idea. I was amazed at the fact that I could make money. I was doing it all online. I was getting actual money deposited into my bank account through working for people out there on the Internet. So that was really cool. I wanted to do more of that, and I had done audio engineering in college. So they basically give you a little taste of everything, like, like say, recording music in a studio, working on movies, doing live concerts. So you get a taste of everything, and you can then go out into the world and decide what you really want to pursue. I love music. I love concerts. I love a lot of these things. But in terms of what worked the best in my mind, I found some things like producing a whole album or a track. It was just kind of too big for my brain. I I just couldn't wrap my head around the concept, although I love the art of it. So at that point, this is probably 2015 or so, uh, podcasting was starting to become more and more popular. And as I was looking for some ways to grow my income stream even more online, I saw that. I thought, well, you know, I have these skills. I'm an audio engineer. I can figure this out and I can offer this as a service. So I started kind of playing around with it, seeing what the interest was, seeing what the market was like. And uh, I just ended up falling into more and more podcasting work and eventually became an entire business. And I had to hire on some help. But that's essentially the story. It was just there at the right time. And it was a fit for my skill set. And I just happened to be uh, there. I almost think of it as luck because it was just it was perfect timing, if you ask me. So great. I thank you for, for breaking that down in college. What was it that was it not, was there not enough money in those industries? I know you said it was a lot of work, but you know, if someone, I mean, I imagine P Diddy, well, maybe not P Diddy, let's, let's say someone else 
approached you and said, listen, Mr. Joel, I see your work. I see your quality. I see you have the creativity. Um, I want to pay you a million dollars. Would you do it? <laughs> well, if it was a million dollars, I would have considered it. But I don't think it typically works that way. You've got to build yourself up and, and work up through the ranks. And not that I'm against that by any means. And I definitely did that in a way to get to where I am now. But I remember at the time I started working with some musicians and you got to do a lot of free work, maybe some internship or at least make some connections. I, I was pretty naive and young back then, but I started doing a little work with some musicians locally. And it was like, oh, we're going to pay you someday. We, we got to, you know, just help us for now. And it was a lot of work and investment into someone else's project that I just thought, I don't know if this is really the path that I want to go down. I, I don't know if I'm committed to that part of it enough to say I'm going to commit for maybe multiple years and not really make an income. It just it just wasn't appealing to me. That's the best I could say at that time. Uh, so that's why. Now, if someone came out of the woodwork with a million dollars, that would be great. But I, you know, that didn't happen in this lifetime anyway. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. You, all things considered, you have to take it into consideration. So what's coming with that million dollars? Are you doing all the work? Do you got to find staff? Do you got to put on a full production? Or are you giving me a million dollars plus a team to help me um, fulfill this job? So everything, right, you have to consider as a professional, as peace of mind, as your sanity goes, mm -hmm. right? You got to do what's always what's best for you. I think and I think yeah. if I was to have that opportunity back then as well, I mean, I was just new. I was pretty fresh out of college. I knew some things, but I would probably not even feel comfortable taking that million dollars because I don't really think I had a million dollar skill set at that point. Yeah. I always hear entrepreneurs talking about how, you know, they, they you know, build a plane on the way down. Right. Or you jump <laughs> off the cliff and then you build a plane and you figure things out as you go. So I've heard a couple of stories with entrepreneurs where they like they take a job and they say, I'm the best thing for you. I can make it happen. And then they walk out of that meeting scared to death mm -hmm. because they don't they they now have to YouTube university. They got to Google. They got to research all these different things that they just said in that room said they could do. Mm -hmm. And so that's true. There's definitely things to be said for that. No doubt about it. And I feel like I kind of went uh, about podcasting that way in business because I was learning as I went, but other people were learning as well. Like they kind of came to me saying, hey, you do editing. Do you know how to set this up or can you write these notes? And I was learning at the same time, but I was pretty confident in the amount that I took on that I could deliver on it. There's certainly something to be said for learning as you go. And I am not a business person by any means. I definitely am much more now than back then, but my skill set was audio engineering. So in terms of business and how to like this whole entrepreneurship thing, I didn't really know what I was doing. So I definitely feel that trying to build the plane on the way down. I was just, I was, it's like that growth model of a business where you just, you encounter a problem, you fix that, and then you keep going, hit another problem, fix that. It's the only way I, I knew how to do things. That's fair. That's so fair. Super dope. How was working as a voiceover? You said you did the voiceover work. How was that? And what, what would you what was your favorite part about it? What was the worst part about it? I think my favorite part was just the fact that I could make money without having to have a, a, an employer involved. Uh, I was a little entrepreneurial growing up, but never really thought too serious about uh, seriously about it for later in life. I just thought, OK, I'm kind of messing around here, making a few dollars uh, when I was younger as a DJ. But I thought, OK, well, then you you become an adult and you get a job. And that's how things go. So I really love the fact that I was making some money on the side. But then I realized, like I mentioned earlier, hey, maybe I could actually do this, do something else more here and uh, and get some extra money. So the independence was one of my favorite things. Uh, I don't know what really downside there was. I mean, you would uh, sometimes get requests from clients to revise things. So you would take extra time to do that. It was a challenge. I mean, for all for all any negative things I could come up with, it was largely outweighed by positive. So I feel very grateful when I look back on it and I really don't have too much bad to say about it. It was great. Uh, the one thing that caused me to move more into the podcasting space was I was starting to travel a little and it's hard to reliably do voiceover work when you're moving place to place because you need a quiet, isolated studio. And mm. also I couldn't scale. It was only ever going to be me doing that work as opposed to if I got into podcasting, we could kind of scale that a bit and grow a team. So those were two reasons why I left it, even though I like doing it. 
That's fair. That's real. Who was the first person when you got into podcasting? Who was the first person you hired and why? Mm -hmm. Well, like I was saying, we would just hit a problem and then try to figure out how to fix that. So the I think the very first person I hired was an additional editor. So if just to, to give some light here on how podcasting works, if you do a long recording, you don't have to do it this way. But most of our clients being businesses, that sort of thing, they would take a recording, let's say an hour long, give it to me and you would go through every bit of that interview and tidy up ums or if someone stumbled or lost their train of thought, I would go through and clean all that up. Now, the only way to do that is just sitting there and, and doing it by hand. So if you have an hour interview, you're talking maybe two, two and a half, even three hours sometimes to do that kind of work. As you can see, you quickly run out of time in a day to complete that. So that was the first thing I encountered was I just don't have any time left to do this. And so the first thing that I needed to, to hire out was another editor, a second person to do that kind of stuff. So I could, uh, well, I was doing more of that at that time. I wasn't even like a manager. I was just <laughs> doing more of it. <laughs> what was, that's real. And and as a podcaster myself, editing is, is really a challenge. What is something that um, you do? Do you have a standard protocol of edits? Like you just said, ums, take out all the ums, um, take out all the the, the mishaps, the, the mistakes, um, or... Do you tell, let the customer tell you what they want in the edits? Like, hey, I want some some sound effects. I want some splash here. I want some thought bubbles here. Like, how do you? What is your common process when when editing a podcast? Yeah, so we really had to rethink that as the business grew, and it actually turned into a legit business, and we tried to grow it because once upon a time, when I was just working one on one with the clients, and that's all that was going on. I could do a lot more of that detailed work if they wanted some sound effects or uh, if they wanted to give me a list of edits to make. I could do that. Now, it still led to some challenges like I choose the wrong sound and they want to change it or they're just indecisive. And now instead of it just being a single project, they needed it revised five times, which as you can see is not an efficient use of time if you're not making any extra money on that type of project. Uh, so that was something I had to start moving away from. As I learned how to have a business and try to scale something, I realized, listen, these just aren't suitable clients for what I'm trying to do here. And it was a little counterintuitive and scary to turn away money. But we we established here is the type of project that we can work on. And we provide this service really, really well. And that's what we're going to focus on. So the business moved towards that direction to where I had to streamline things a lot more to establish some, say, ground rules and some ideal clients. And so we don't really deal with uh, like sound effects or any kind of storytelling podcast. We do mostly interviews. Uh, we can accept a couple of edits from a client to say, hey, could you please delete this, this and this? But otherwise, we have a, a standard procedure on how we do things. And we really need to stick to that because for the sake of the business, the more that we stray from there or start doing special requests or making exceptions, the whole thing, the systems, it all just starts to fall apart. That's real. <laughs> That's super real. There's a lot of work. I, I think I see people popping up with podcasting all the time. And I always kind of I, I, I see it all the time. They they start a podcast or they think they're gonna start a podcast and then they fizz out. Um they give up, they 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 can't keep up with the demand. What are some common mistakes that you see podcasters um do? Or or let's start here. What are what are some things people need to know before even considering starting a podcast? Starting mm -hmm. I would say really consider why you are starting in the first place. Like, what are your goals? If you don't have a clear idea of that, you're not going to be motivated to stick through. So whether it is eventually profits or you're trying to make some connections or you'd like to improve your public speaking, there are a whole bunch of benefits that come with podcasting, but you need to think about those first. So you've got a clear mission. Uh, second, if you're not going to do it for a minimum of a year, there's really little point in starting because it just takes time. Like it takes multiple years to really grow a podcast into something big. Now, that said, uh, you know, you don't need to necessarily, you don't, it doesn't need to be this big, serious thing. You don't need to do it for a long time, but if you're going to bother starting it at all, why start something that you're just going to give up? So that's an important consideration. Um, in terms of editing, like we just spoke about and the other tasks that go along with it, like writing the notes, uploading it, creating some social media content, 
there are a lot of benefits here in terms of how you can repurpose content, but it's going to either take time or money to do that. And depending on where you are on your entrepreneurial journey, you might have more of one or the other. Maybe you have a bunch of time and not much money. Okay, well, you can focus on on doing the, the, the work yourself. If you've got more money and you need time back, well, then you should outsource it. But that's an important consideration as well, because if you're not able to reliably get those episodes out consistently for a long period of time, it's just not going to work. And if you feel a lot of friction there, like you are a busy entrepreneur and you try to start podcasting and you feel like this is just too, I don't have time for this, booking the guests or doing the editing. It's really, it's really difficult to keep up with. Inevitably, it's just going to, it's going to fizzle out like you're saying, because you just get busy one week, you, you put it off, you don't do it, then two weeks go by. So you really want to set yourself up for success, but understand your mission, why you want to do it, understand what's going to be required of you and what's going to be required to keep it going for that long period of time. And also having an eye on get, like get good advice. So you even know, how do I make sure I'm making the right moves here to say to ideally in, in a year or two years or three years from now, be in a better place and not just be still with say zero downloads. Like we do want to have an idea of how to get <laughs> to a, a goal, whatever that is. That's so true. I, I, I remember it happened like a year or two ago, this young lady wanted to start a podcast and she reached out to me because I've been doing podcasting since 2014. And so she was like, um, I want to start a podcast, um, but I see that you have one. Mind you, she had never watched my show. Right. But she just knew I had one and she knew I've been doing it and, and chanting my own horn for a really long time. And so she's like, I want to start a podcast. I said, OK, what's it about? And she's like, real estate. I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> there are like 10 million real estate podcasts out there what and i asked her what's the what is the difference that you're going to bring that is going to make that podcast stand out and she's like well i'm going to teach people how to save money i'm going to tell people how to house i said all of that's already been done mm -hmm. it's been done been done multiple times you're, you're not going to compete with the big guys and i just i just told her quite frankly like i'm not the i'm not i'm not interested in working with you mm -hmm. um number one and then again you're going to fizzle out because you're you're going to just be repeating the same thing that people, the same thing that people have been doing for so long. The message is not going to stick. The tone of your podcast is not going to stick. How important is that storyline or what that message or what that reason behind it? How important is that? I would say it's quite important because like you're saying, if you don't really have that or anything special or a story about you, then you can easily just blend into everything else. Like there's going to be someone else out there doing it better than you. That's not to say don't start. Cause like we were just chatting about, you can be learning, you can make connections, you can improve your speaking skills. So just because there are like there, of course there's going to be existing podcasts that may be similar to what you want to do. So, you know, you, you can't just sit back and say, I give up. I'm not going to do anything. Like there are similar businesses <laughs> to something a person may want to <laughs> launch or YouTube channels it's it's a big world there's a lot of people out there so we do want to yeah be mindful of the reality of the situation but say for example with real estate uh, as i mentioned repurposing well you could do a podcast and you could take that content and make social media clips out of it you can make blogs for seo so there can be other benefits there you can be making connections all sorts of things so yeah being unique though that's one thing that people cannot take away from you because at the end of the day, only you are you. So there's going to be some people that just happen to like your style, like your personality, and they don't they don't like it as or they don't like other people as much as they might like you. So they'll gravitate towards your real estate podcast, even though, yes, there are lots of them out there. Think about how you choose to to take in content in your own life. Some people you just like, they just resonate with you. And that's totally cool. Uh, the more that you put yourself on display and be yourself, the real you the more people can opt in who would who would want to listen to your stuff and maybe do business with you. So don't be afraid, but certainly uh, be aware, I suppose, of, yeah, not, not just blending in like everyone else. Do what you can to stand out. That's true. That's true. Yeah, she needed to just give up. Um, <laughs> well, I'm not familiar with that situation, but okay, well, that's the other option. Of, you can take what I said or you just quit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was, it was, and what you were saying is significant, right? It don't use it as a learning opportunity. 
that being said, how is how important is a mentor? Should people partner with a professional podcaster like yourself? Um, is that a good thing to do? Is that a bad thing to do? Uh, let me tell you why. Um, because my thing, my fear is you partner with somebody and then you shit and you you grow and you learn and you great do all these great things together and then they leave you like a boy band, right? That was the age of Backstreet Boys. Look at them. In sync. Look at them. B2K, look at them. Beyonce, uh, Destiny's Child, look at them, right? So it's that, it's that, that, is it a good idea to partner with someone who has the same interests or further ahead than you? Because there's always that risk of them leaving. Any, any mm -hmm. thoughts on that? Well, I would say those situations could look a variety of different ways. I mean, maybe we're talking a co-host, which, yeah, your relationship then is quite tight. And then if that person leaves, you may be out on your own. Maybe you don't have the login information. You just everything got stolen <laughs> from you or it could be serious. Maybe you have a contract and there's some kind of sponsors involved. It could be like that, uh, but it doesn't have to be that serious. Let's say you mentioned working with a professional. I've done this many times over the years where people are starting a podcast. And they some will go do it on their own, and that's fine. Others will get down that path of looking into how do I launch a podcast and realize, hey, this is too much work. I don't want to mess this up. I would rather get the advice from a professional. And that can look like a that could be a done for you thing where a professional walks you through the entire process. It could be a done with you where they kind of guide you through it, or it could just be a bit of consulting. Typically, I do recommend getting some assistance, and I try to say that as you know, not in a biased way because it's it's what I do. But uh, if if someone's a hobbyist and they're just trying to get into it for fun, they don't really have a budget. I would never say, "Hey, no, you have to pay me some money," or you're doing you're making a big mistake. But uh, it, when it comes, especially to professionals or businesses, I do recommend getting some help because we don't want to put something out there that makes you look bad. We don't want to have a situation where you do something not realizing it was a mistake. And then six months or a year down the road, you realize I made a big error when I started this and now everything's messed up and I've got to fix it. Or I could have been way farther ahead if I had some professional advice. So getting a little advice just to make sure you're on the right track, at least make sure you've got a decent audio setup. Things are sounding, looking OK. I highly recommend it for that. And just to just to make sure that you're on the right path. And there could be some technical challenges as well. There are some services that make it fairly easy to start a podcast, but depending on the situation, a person may not have time. They may be better off spending their time somewhere else. And uh, they just, they'd be better off getting some help right from the get go. And I've seen that work the best. I've had a lot of people come to me halfway through uh, a complete disaster of a process of launching and saying, I don't know what's going on. I should have just got help from the start. So there's definitely a case to be made for that, but also doing it yourself if that's the situation you find yourself in. For real, for real. Huge, 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 huge. I love this. I want I want to stick right here one more second because I want to, this is, a, this is important. Um, which one do you commonly, in this day and age, 2024, the year of our Lord, um, what do you recommend going video podcasting or audio podcasting? Um, when getting started. What's your recommendation? We've definitely seen a trend more and more towards video. Like we kind of saw it coming and it's it's here, it's happening. You can certainly have success with an audio only podcast. There are many, many people who are doing that and seeing great success. But a couple of things where I say video is an important consideration, first of all, would be promotion. So you, I'm sure you're familiar with this, seeing clips, say, on Instagram Reels or TikTok from podcasts, and those are video for promoting the episodes. Before this was a thing, we would have usually a still image, like a graphic with an audio clip from the podcast playing under it. Engagement just wasn't quite as good on those as video. People are kind of expecting video. So even if you're actually publishing your podcast as audio only, the full version, I do love the idea of recording video when you do the interview or even if it's a solo thing, and using that video to put on social media. That's a, that's a huge benefit and relatively simple to do. So I, I suggest at minimum doing that, not completely necessary, but we're seeing more and more of it these days. It just makes sense. Um, and a, a consideration here as well, if we're talking, say, the full video, so the say a 30 or 40 hour long interview, putting that full video up on YouTube so people could see it. There are several considerations there. You definitely want to be on YouTube. 
and you can be on there with just your audio. You don't need to have actual video footage to do that. So at the very least, be on there. Um, video at one point, I mean, still to some extent, it's more challenging to edit. Uh, you may in the past have had a background that you needed to consider or your lighting. So you could be sitting in a closet doing an, an audio podcast and no one knows. <laughs> But when you add video, then they might see like you're in your underwear or something. So you kind of have to consider all these things, especially as a professional. OK, am I putting am I able to put out a good like, do I look good here? A good image. Um, and if not, if, someone may think, well, I don't want to do business with that person anymore. Like, look where their look where their office is. You know, it's in there. It's on their couch. So those are some considerations. But we have all this AI stuff now that can easily remove a background. Uh, so video has become a lot more accessible to actually publish and our, I guess, expectations in terms of what what video should look like have adjusted as well. So you'll see some podcasts which are very nicely produced. They've got multiple camera angles, perfect lighting. You don't have to do that. You can put you can put virtually anything on on YouTube so long as it doesn't damage your reputation in terms of the quality. But you definitely want to be on YouTube as a platform of distribution. Uh, video itself is not necessary, but highly recommended this day and age for sure. For sure. For sure. I told y'all, Mr. Joe <laughs> spilling the tea here on Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Speaking of affiliates, we got to pay some bills. We got to show some love to our VIP sponsors. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right, right back. Baby Gear Services DMV specializes in high quality baby gear rentals in the Maryland and DC metro area. We have a wide range of baby gear items for rent, including wooden cribs, car seats, high chairs, and more. We also offer seasonal specials and free delivery. Our prices are very versatile to cover every budget. Wooden cribs start at $17 a day, high chairs, and even car seats start at $5 a day. Check out our website, www.bgsdmv.com. Support for Gentleman Style Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers you precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right. The 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code GENSTYLE at manscaped.com. We are back to the Gentleman Style Podcast show, and we have the incredible Mr. Joe spilling the tea on podcasting. If you missed anything he laid down, he laid, he gave some great insight, tips, things to consider when starting a podcast, how to podcast, where you should go audio, video first. We are on iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes, Spotify, Ghana, Radio.com, iHeartRadio, um, LinkedIn, YouTube, anywhere you get your podcast. Go back, check him out, scroll back. He is phenomenal. He's the man of the hour here, spilling the tea on Gentleman Style Podcast Show. And so, Mr. Joe, can you share some audio tips? Because it's break <laughs> podcasting can break the bank if you let it. So you gave mm -hmm. some great tips on, you know, whether things to consider, whether going video first or audio first or going both. Um, but are, can you share some hacks on how to save some money when going video or audio? Any Any ideas there? Mm -hmm. Well, the good news is you don't need to spend a whole lot to get decent audio. On the other hand, it's important because pretty much the number one reason that people will tune out of a podcast and stop listening is bad audio quality. Uh, there's so much competition and choice out there when it comes to content. If you're lucky enough that someone comes to your podcast, they're not going to settle for something that's hard for them to hear. Or it's really noisy. They can't make out the words. It's just not going to happen. So we want to get the basics in line for your podcast and having a decent audio quality is definitely one of those things. So my first tip would be use a decent microphone. And this does not need to break the bank, which is what we're talking about here. You don't need to spend thousands. The price of this stuff has come way down. There are various USB microphones that you can use as a solo podcaster or a host online like we're doing under a hundred dollars 
and they plug in. They're nice and simple. You don't need to really know much about audio, but they sound great, much better than, say, the, the mic that we built into your laptop or iPhone headphones. So I highly recommend that. If you're at all serious about podcasting, you you definitely would be worth your time to at least get a mic. Uh, also, if you're doing interviews remotely online, always use headphones. If you don't, it can cause echo problems and uh, it's a simple fix. Your environment is something else you can consider as well, because this could essentially be a free fix. If you can move to a quiet room versus somewhere that's got a lot of people traffic or there's traffic out on the roads, there are people are talking, that can be bad. Uh, if it's got an echo, you lay down some carpet or get to a room that has more furniture, those types of things. So uh, that using a decent internet connection, don't have flaky Wi-Fi, plug in <laughs> if you can. You know, we don't want to have the the sound all choppy and the, the picture dropping if we're doing video. And also, I like to think if you have like a Dropbox or Google Drive or some app open that uses a lot of bandwidth, pause those during your podcast interviews if you're doing these interviews online, because that can affect the quality of the recording as well. But those are some tips that I always like to start with. And they essentially, aside from the mic, they don't really cost you anything, but they can have a huge impact on the quality of your recording and uh, whether or not people stick around when they tune in. That's so true. I have heard, I have heard, and you can help us debunk this myth right here, right now. I have heard, because I see it all the time, content creators using uh, DSLR cameras, and then you have some content creators saying, oh, don't, you know, don't use your iPhone. What, what do you recommend? Do, do I need to at least break, you know, some of the bank open on getting a good camera if i decide to go video or is is an iphone or dun 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 an android <laughs> <laughs> sorry for those of you in the audience but what what should i should i open up my pocketbook for that it depends on where you're at uh, with video unless you are really trying to do something that's sharply produced i wouldn't worry too much in the beginning about investing in a expensive high quality camera. It's just not really necessary. Some in say a laptop are going to be better than others like the the newer MacBooks and MacBook Air, pretty good camera. And of course some some Windows as well, some are not going to look as good. So you can get away with doing that. Uh if you're trying to do more content creation like recording videos directly for YouTube, well, you can assess if it's uh you know, if it's of adequate quality. The iPhones are pretty good. You can get a very, very high quality video from iPhones these days. And I'm sure you've heard them be used for like movies and music videos and that sort of thing. They can work great if you're able to set it up well. Um, I know on Mac also these days, you can use your iPhone as a webcam with just a click of a button wirelessly. You don't need any fancy stuff and you get a much higher quality camera and video picture through the phone that way. So that's... Uh, it would be a hard case to make that to just get started. You need to go out and buy one of those really expensive cameras. It's just uh, in most cases, I don't think you're going to see the ROI from that right away. You could probably do other things with that money in your business. But of course, everyone's situation is unique. So it depends on your exact needs. Uh, most most cases, I think something more affordable, like even your iPhone, if you need to use that or your laptop would be fine just to start at least. That's fair. That's fair. So You've been podcasting a year because remember earlier, you guys, he recommended give it a year, minimum of a year. If you can't if you can't do this podcasting for a minimum of a year, um, don't even don't even get started. So now you've gone over the year. You've done the year's time. I want to start um, upgrading some of the stuff. What are some ways people can get paid in podcasting and make some money and start to see some some revenue coming in um, starting off? What are some some suggestions there? Mm hmm. There are a variety of ways. One of the most common that I deal with is uh, an entrepreneur just has something that they're selling. So this could be like an online coach, someone that's selling some kind of service online or a product, and they use the podcast to drive traffic into their own their own stuff, their own community, whatever that is. So if you have a business and you're using podcasting as a marketing tool, well, then you've got your solution right there. Uh, sponsorships would be another one. You know, you just ran a couple of ads, which is great. You're getting some money, I assume. <laughs> wasn't a freebie. So getting sponsorship money. Now, there are a variety of ways uh, to go about that. And, you know, the, the amount of money that you would get, well, it will vary based on a different number of factors. 
for example, the amount of downloads that you get if you're trying to get a sponsor where they're going to want a minimum. Uh, you can do affiliate programs. However, if you're smaller, where you get a percentage of the sales. So that means if there's no sales, you get nothing. But if there are sales, you get something. And there's no real risk to the advertisers. You heard these a lot, like if they give out a special code to sign up for a service or something. So that can be uh, something to think about. There's also things like selling merchandise or creating a community like with Patreon and essentially taking donations. But it will vary depending on your situation. Uh, I just think it's good to think out what your goals are and, and what makes the most sense. Because we don't like to hear either, let's say, if you had an ad-free podcast and it was for a business, and then you decided, I have to jump in to get some sponsorships here, just because some people think they have to do that. But with the size of the audience you have now, let's say you're just making $5 an episode and you've polluted it with a couple of ads. And now your business doesn't look as professional anymore. So we want to think, don't just assume I have to go the sponsorship route or I have to do this. Look at what your actual goals are and then choose the best based on that. And and I want to I want to stick right here because this is gold. This is gold. What he just said, y'all. This is true magic. I see a lot of podcasts that that they get a bunch of just like you said. <laughs> and I think the word you use was like trash. Like <laughs> like if you have a podcast and you're talking real estate, and then I see ads coming across your screen about Manscape. That's that's a misalignment, right? And then if you got a bunch of ads that just don't go with your brand, um, a big a a. a Another podcaster, he said he he turns away a lot of affiliates um, because they're not in a line with his brand. They're not in a line with his podcast. If you're talking about um, what's the new thing on the block? New thing is like um, recaps. So I listen to a podcast. They do a family matter, family matters recap. And so they're recapping the family matters TV show from season one to season, I think, eight or nine or however long it ran. And so your sponsors should be in a line with that. You don't want to get some weird taboo. Am, am I wrong or right, Mr. Joe? Have you seen that as well? Absolutely. Yeah, you would <laughs> want the sponsor to be in line with the audience. Otherwise, they're going to see, think it's strange. You're not going to get as good of a result for your sponsor if it's a complete mismatch. So you absolutely would want something that's in, in line with what you're actually putting out there as content, certainly. Yeah. When should people start introducing products like T-shirts and keychains? Is that even a thing? Um, when should people start doing that? You could do it at any time, especially with those drop shipping websites out there where you don't need to have any kind of inventory. You can just print it on demand. But the thing is getting people who are passionate about your, your podcast who would want to purchase those sorts of things. So you're not just going to come out of the gate most of the time and someone's going to want to buy your t-shirt. Like you really need to build up a brand. And that probably goes even beyond the scope of podcasting uh, solely. You could have a podcast that's just that, just that everyone's a big fan of it. Of course, those things exist. But uh, also consider kind of like we're talking about here, what is the best option? Like if you're doing a podcast, um, should you start a business and sell a service? Like, do you have something you could sell that way? Or would your best bet be to actually sell a keychain? Like, it's probably not keychains. That might be a supplementary thing or a shirt or something like that in most cases. If you are just doing a podcast as a hobby, well, sure, merch could be the way to go. But you're going to need a, a substantial audience of some sort before anyone would even consider buying that from you you can it's going to take a while to build but so does everything yeah for sure when did you productize your your podcast when did you start at it um advertising your editing services for podcasting was that earlier on in the business was that later on or and why did you do that what was the strategy behind that we actually only started our podcast roughly six months ago five or six months ago and you know, typically, I like being behind the scenes. I was an audio nerd growing up. I didn't want to be on the stage. I was just behind the scenes. And I like doing that with the business as well. But as it grew or we kind of just we kind of stagnated, there was nothing wrong, but I wanted the business to grow more. And I chatted with a marketing friend of mine and she said, well, you know, you're telling everyone how great podcasting is for their business and how you can use it as a marketing tool. Why don't you have one? And I thought, well, you know, that's a good point. And I've been asked that over the years as well. So we started it for that reason, for the variety of benefits of podcasting, like building that brand up, uh, having an engaged audience, 
we want to put ourselves out there, obviously, but I like, I've connected with some great people. We're reusing the content. So it goes out on Instagram. I don't have to even think about Instagram. It goes out on an email list. It's, it's kind of cool for me to get some thoughts together and put those out and, and learn from other people. So those are some of the main reasons that we, we started the podcast and, uh, yeah, we're only six months in. So as you know, based on the timeline I give, that's really not that much time. I've really enjoyed it so far, but uh, I'm sure as it continues, we're going to see a lot more benefits from that for the business. Amen. Amen. I want to get a little personal here with you because you went through something that every time I read it scares the bejesus out of me. You had open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. And that's that's not something to just shake a stick at. That's not something to just brush over and overlook. What happened? What were you stressed? What what happened? Because you 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 look young, like like younger than me. You look good, brother. You work out, <laughs> you, you you ripped. Like what happened? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I know uh through that process, as I met with say the surgeon and various nurses and anyone else there, they were always shocked, like you, you? And because uh, I was so young. So I was 28 yeah. at the time. Uh it's actually a genetic thing. So interesting, interestingly enough, I had this surgery in 2018. My mom had it in 2017, so she was older than I was, but uh, she had the exact same condition, so I assume that's where I got it from, so it wasn't stress. It was just a genetic thing. There was nothing I could do about it. Uh, the condition was called mitral valve prolapse, so without getting too detailed, essentially one of the valves in your heart, it leaks. It doesn't close properly, so you think the heart is pumping. It's trying to move the blood throughout your body, but it's trying, and it's the blood is not moving efficiently. So your heart starts to get tired because it's just not able to, to keep up. Um, so side effects typically associated with that would be tiredness. I had some heart rhythm issues. So they were watching me for a while. They eventually said, yeah, you know, you got to. And I was surprised because I felt pretty good. I was hiking. I was working out. I didn't really think anything was wrong. But uh, they said, you got to go get this done. And a year later, put me in. They replaced it with a mechanical valve. So I actually have a piece of titanium in there right now. But other than that, life's been good. You know, they uh, got me back, back, I sprung back pretty quick and yeah, no complaints. You know, it was, it was a thing. It's funny you mentioned how scary it sounds because it does sound scary. Uh, if anyone else mentions some kind of medical procedure or condition to me, I think, wow, I'm glad I don't have to go through that. But I had to go through this and uh, it's, it's in my past now. I, it seems like a dream because I know it did happen, but uh, I'm living well. So, yeah, it's just uh, it's just something you just deal with it like stuff happens in life. You just deal with it. So I didn't have any choice. It was just I had to get this done. And I did. And here we are. For sure. For sure. What triggered it? Did you you said you're hiking, you're fit, you're exercising. What triggered it? Were you just getting a routine check and they noticed it or what? Because you say you're feeling active. You weren't tired. What happened? Mm -hmm. So they had been monitoring me for probably close on 10 years, maybe seven to 10 years. Uh, I had a couple of instances, like once I just ran up over the stairs in my house and all of a sudden my heart was getting a uh, atrial fibrillation, <laughs> it's called, where instead of that normal heartbeat rhythm, it's just like all over the place. It's really scary. And it was the first time it ever happened to me. And I'm thinking, what the heck is going on here? I don't know what this is. So I had to go in an ambulance to the hospital. It eventually settled down. But from then on, they started watching me to see. And when they discovered that I had this leaky valve, they basically said, we got to check on you every year and see if this is progressing. I ended up in the hospital once more in a similar situation. But with that yearly monitoring, they eventually found out, yeah, this is actually getting worse. It's not staying the same and it's only going to get worse. And the more that you delay getting the surgery, your heart's going to get more and more tired because it's just not able to work efficiently. So you got to go. Incredible. Well, I'm glad you're here, man. I'm glad you didn't do the stubborn thing like most people do. And they're like, oh, no, I'm good. You know, you know, I'm good. I'm a fit as fiddle. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm glad you didn't take that route because too many people take that route. And then we we end up paying for it. So I'm glad you're here, man. I'm really, I really Thank am. you. Yeah. I mean, and it's an interesting thing, too, when like I've heard other people's stories of these and they were very aware that they had a heart problem. Like they're they're going numb. They're collapsing. They're just not sure what's going on. I didn't have that. So you're really just taking you have to trust the doctor who's telling you, listen, there's something wrong with you. Uh, and you don't really have a reference point, I suppose, for like what your energy levels should or could be like. 
when you have this issue because you're just living with it. I don't know if I feel tired or not. I I guess maybe <laughs> you yeah. just don't know. So you're just they're telling you, hey man, you got to have this giant surgery and you just you just have to trust them. But yeah, I I went ahead with it obviously, and we're all good. Good, 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 good. Round of applause for him. <laughs> Round of applause for Mr. Joe. And mom's still with us. Mom's still with us, right? Mom oh, had yeah. surgery as well. So good. She's doing just as well as I am. Super dope, super dope. Mr. Joe, this has been an epic discussion and interview. You have shared so many nuggets, so many tips, so many strategies, so many mindset shifts. Um, if you had one more trick in a hat, <laughs> literally, because you're wearing a hat, if you had one more um, tool, some nugget to that one individual whose back is against the wall, except that chick who wanted to start a real estate podcast, except her, any advice, one more piece of nugget to that young boy, young girl who wants to start a podcast, but don't know whether they should get started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you have to make the decision on what, whether you think it's right for you. I think there are so many benefits to it. It's hard to go wrong. Uh, how you actually go about it would be something that you could think about more in terms of how it applies to your situation. But uh, if you've got something to say, you don't need a whole lot of money. You can literally start with your smartphone if you just want to try it out and, and be yourself. That's a big, big thing. And it's easy to say it's more difficult to do. I wish I started earlier in life or had the, the power to just be me because that's what makes you stand out. So work on that. Don't be afraid to confidently put yourself out there. And I think good things will happen. Would you do anything different knowing what you know now and your wisdom and experience? Uh, would you do anything different today? I, yeah, it's hard to answer that because I, I like to tell myself I don't regret anything in life because everything that I've experienced adds up to who I am now. So yeah, obviously, would I have liked to go back to 10 years ago and be the person I am now and live those 10 years again with all this knowledge and the person I become? Of course, but life just doesn't work that way. I would not be the person I am today had I not lived those last 10 years how I did. So I have no regrets. It's hard to say that I would go back and change anything because life just happens as it does and we just have to learn from it. And so here we are. You just make the most of the time that you have. Facts. Facts. This is incredible. I, you can tell I love, I love what we do. I love this. Mr. Joe, thank you, brother. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for giving back in this way. Thank you for sharing some incredible insights, some incredible wisdom today on the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I want to say this to you publicly, brother. Don't ever quit. Don't ever give up. Well, thank you, Marcus. I appreciate you having me on, and I really like what you've built here. So congrats for hanging in there all these years, and keep at it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And thank, oh, how can people connect with you? How can people find you? How can people tune in to this movement? This train has left the station, but how can people connect? <laughs> Yeah, easiest way would be eastcoaststudio.com. Everything is there, our podcast, webinar, social media to contact me, eastcoaststudio.com. Absolutely. And and for our audio listeners who um, may struggle with, with seeing this, it's East Coast Studio, one word, no hyphens, no commas there, dot com. So for our audio platform listeners, check him out, get connected, get connected. He's absolutely phenomenal. This is dope. This is dope. And so we got to let Mr. Joe go. He got many more edits. He probably got a stack of edits because <laughs> editing, just like he described, is serious business if you're not, if you're doing it all yourself. So we got to let this man go. But hopefully when he writes that book, if he hasn't, you wrote, you wrote a book? Not yet. I, got, I think I need another decade of experience yet to fill it up. There we go. There we go. We'll get him back on when he writes that book, y'all. But like, thank you all for tuning in. I hope this message was encouraging. I hope this was inspiring. I hope this was helpful. But like we end every show, take care of your friends, take care of your family, and always, always take care of business. This is Marcus, your favorite general, and Mr. Joel, a podcasting expert personality. Signing off. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.